Friends and family, welcome to another video. In this video, I just want to share with you some of the research that I've done in involving this, this Neverland situation. I have now come to the conclusion that the real victim is Michael Jackson. So if you want to know why, stay tuned. So all this information I'm going to share with you is again from research that I've done um, looking um, at media and also some court documents and things like that. And then I'm going to kind of weave into it my own life um, situations that is causing me to think a certain way. So here we go. Uh, let's first talk about the Chandler. That's the very first person who accused uh, Michael Jackson of child molestation, um, who disappeared since then. And his, um, uh, from what I read, he's actually even done plastic surgery, so he's not recognizable and has changed his name. Um, and moved away from the LA area uh, just to try to stay away from that whole big thing that happened in his life when he was younger. Um, his mother's testimony in court uh, when it came to the 2005 uh, allegations from the other child, when you are testifying, there's uh, something about your character. They need to ascertain that you are actually trustworthy that you have good character that they can trust what's coming out of your mouth and she wasn't able to portray that um i always say the truth is one no matter how bad your memory is the truth is one okay so if you're not telling a story and you're telling the truth 50 20 000 years later is the same that's all i have to say about that so anyway the other thing is so um uh, her estranged husband or ex-husband he committed suicide several months after Michael Jackson was killed. Uh, I think the overdose of propofol was intentional and they had been staging it leading up to that because he was insured for $1.5 billion um, for this, the This Is It uh, tour. And if, if you check Wade and, Wade and uh, Safe Chuck's uh, claim you know what they're trying to get from him in the civil court they're trying to get 1.5 billion dollars coincidence i think not anyway um the 22 million or 25 million whatever it was that was paid to the boy and his family was from uh, michael's insurance because looking at how much they will spend going to court and what these people are asking for it would be cheaper to just pay them and so that was it. And and they will tell you the court of law, you know, paying somebody when they're demanding money from you is not an admission of guilt. For me, I was bummed. I'm like, dude, you shouldn't have done that. Go to court. But look at first of all, you have tours lined up. You know, you have visits to hospitals and you know children coming over. You know, from the hospitals. You know, terminally ill children. All those things. And then mixing in this stupidity that somebody's you know, and you know you know that you're innocent however you have to you know wait do you want to spend a year year and a half dragging this through court and putting everything else in your life on hold or if your insurance is going to that's what insurance is for if it's a liability that they're going to pay for just get ready to go and get out of my life just get out of my life you know and let me spend time with you know other people who truly deserve my time so that's how i see that okay I used to live in this area where you know we had tons of children in the neighborhood, lots and lots of children. I really identify with Michael Jackson because I love children. I think they are just the most pure. A child will look at your teeth and tell you, you got crooked teeth. Why do you have crooked teeth? You, you have crooked teeth. <laughs> you know, they're honest and they're pure. They don't mean anything evil by it. They're just saying what they are observing. In my previous video, I told you I was molested by three different people in three different households that I lived. Um, that has made me want to protect children. I want them to be around me all the time so that they are not around those kinds of people. So I feel like that also gives me a chance not only to protect them, but also to raise them right. People are not raising their children right. You see these children with terrible manners, you know, and they're like, why, why are parents acting like they're afraid of their children? Can't tell their children what to do, what not to do. That is terrible. This is the new 
you know, uh, generation coming up that is going to rule the world. They are going to rule the world. And they can't say please or thank you. They don't want to work hard. They want to just get handouts for everything. No. So that's another thing that I have a passion for, to raise children right, raise our leaders, you know what I mean? So that when it's their time, they actually are responsible and law-abiding citizens in the world. So I had kids in my house from the neighborhood. They always came there almost every day, really. And my husband and I make, make sure that we buy, um, that we buy uh, snacks for them, chips, yogurt, ice cream, lollipops, you know, all kinds of stuff so that when they come and they need a snack, they have something to eat. And at any point in time, I would have maybe six to eight of the neighborhood kids in my house. And I thought it was, I just absolutely loved it, you know, and I saw the growth and the change in them. Hi, Miss Nana, thank you, Miss Nana, may I please have, I taught them all that because when they came, you know, in the beginning, I want, I want some ice cream. That one has ice cream. Why don't I have ice cream? And I taught them in my house, you say please and you say thank you. And nobody owes you anything. So when you want something, you have to request it politely if you want to get it <laughs> in my house. Okay. So anyway, so they, they just came to actually love hanging out in my house. And one day, um, you know, they're playing in the, in the living area and that's, you know, the main floor and I went upstairs through my ba my bedroom into my bathroom to take a shower, a quick shower, so that I could start to get ready. But I didn't want to kick them out, you know, they're eating snacks or something. So I'm in the shower and then one of the kids comes over um, called Deanna. She was about maybe seven or eight years old and I had the shower door, shower door open and my bedroom door open so I could hear them downstairs because I always want to know if somebody's screaming or crying, you know, I have to be able to rush out because um, I was the only adult in the house. So um, I'm hearing the kids playing and everything and then Deanna comes and she goes, Miss Nana, um, can I please have some ice cream? At first I didn't hear what she said. So I'm like, what are you saying? Because I'm in the shower, the, you know, the water is pouring down and you know, the shower door is closed. And I'm like, I can't hear you. So she steps in. And, and she says it again and I still couldn't hear her I'm like I, I can't hear you speak louder okay and then she says it again I'm like oh so I turn on the faucet and then I open the shower door I'm like what is it and so she goes may I please have some ice cream I'm like oh yeah sure go and ask you know and I told her you know my daughter and tell her to go to the freezer downstairs because in the upstairs freezer I had you know um I don't have the extras there because that freezer is small. So go to the downstairs freezer and then to get you the ice cream, you know, from the basement and bring it to you. And she goes, thank you. So I, you know, close the door and I'm showering again. And then within like 30 seconds, her brother, older brother comes in and he may have been eight or nine years old. And he comes in, you know, into the bathroom also. And I'm like, wait, <laughs> this is a boy. So I'm like, um, you shouldn't be coming to the bathroom when I'm bathing. And he goes, well, Deanna just got, you know, ice cream. Can I get some? I'm like, you got some already. So we're standing there having this conversation. I'm like, wait, no, wait, no, <laughs> he shouldn't be here. And I said, you know what? I'm going to take a bath. Please close the door, um, go out, close the door. And then when I'm done, you know, I'll come and get it for you because he, or he had already had some, first of all. And so then I started to think about it, about the Michael Jackson situation. And I said, first of all, for me, it was okay for a girl to come into the bathroom because we had very similar things, except I may be a little bit more developed, not that much in some areas than the girl, but it's not starkly different, you know? And so I'm okay with, you know, a girl coming in, but when it was a, a, the opposite gender, that one, an alarm went off in my head. Same with Michael Jackson. If he's standing there and having a shower, these kids, you know, come in and they're boys, same gender, same genitals, same, like I have family friends who when they were going through a certain situation or whatnot they'd have their kids come over and yeah the kids would be like I, I'm not I can't sleep you know at night and they were little I can't I, I'm not gonna put them at night in their in a little room at the other side of the house no you can come sleep in my bed I still would prefer if a child is in my house for them to sleep where I can see them that in another room, because in another room, I have no control of what happens to them there. Because in my life, <laughs> when certain things happen to me, it's when I was in a room by myself. So looking at his situation and thinking about myself in those days, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna have to stop this because this is how I, I, I imagined it being spun. 
let's say Deanna went home and she's not hungry for dinner because she's just eating ice cream at my house. And so her mom's like, why are you not hungry? Well, Miss Nana said I could have ice cream. And her mom's like, wait, when? But it's dinner time. Well, when I was in her bathroom, she said I could have ice cream. And her mom would probably be like, wait, you were in her bathroom? Yeah, she told, she told me she couldn't hear me, so I went inside the bathroom. And then her mom would be like, you were inside her bathroom? What was she doing? She was taking a shower. Um, what do you mean? She was talking to you when she's inside the bathroom and naked? Was she naked? Yeah, she was naked. She opened the shower door and we were having a conversation about ice cream. As a parent, you will start to think a certain way, wouldn't you? Okay, so now this child has seen me fully like how God made me, but now her parents, her mom could have asked her, describe what you saw. She saw me fully naked. If I were somebody who could ridiculously wealthy, Depending on the kind of parent she had, the parent could have twisted things and made it seem a different kind of way so that they could extort money. Did the child see what the child saw? Yes, they did. They absolutely did. So if they're asked to describe me, they will describe me to the T, right? Okay. The other part of it, did I do anything to the child? No. But parents can unfortunately manipulate their children. Well, if you would say this, if you say that, then, you know, then it's going to help me because he's going to give me some money. She's going to give me some money and then, you know, have so many bills. Chandler owed $60,000 plus in overdue child uh, support. And he was trying to be big in Hollywood and make movies, trying to, you know, extort money from Michael Jackson, things like that. You know what I mean? And this boy was caught in between. The boy felt affection for Michael Jackson because Michael was more, you know, understanding of where the boy was in his life. You know, because where I come from, men hold hands, friends do, friends hold hands without being sexually interactive or even sexually interested. It's normal. Jackson truly had that child mentality the sexuality part is not there it's not but after that Michael Jackson case and I, it, it broke my heart when you know the neighborhood kids would come and I'm in my room I would close the door lock it you can't come in knock on the door and I'll talk to you through the door my problem is that Michael Jackson did not take heed after that very first situation that happened where his insurance had to pay 20 something million to that child's parents, he should have taken heed. But in his situation, being childlike in his mind and his, in his behavior, being so trusting and thinking, no, that is just one of a kind. None of the other parents will do that. They accept me into their family. I take them out shopping. I close malls for them to pick gifts and things like that. They wouldn't do that to me. That is his childlike mind being so totally trusting that he never thought that anyone else would do that to him again. After everything that he's put forth for all of these people, for his fans, for you know his relatives, his friends, and now in his death, 10 years later, even before that, trying to sue for how much? The same amount that his insurance was worth for the this is it and also the Beatles remember Sony he had that fallout with Sony and the Beatles um, uh, music that he bought for some millions and when he died it was sold back his estate sold it back for 1.6 billion dollars back to Sony or whoever it was so all of these things I'm looking into I'm like he was sacrificed. He he had it's same with Prince. Fell out with the same, you know, with Sony and this and this and that and that. Brilliant people like that who are so gifted don't last long because there are vultures around them. Oprah had a lot to gain. Um, any publicity is good publicity. 
bad publicity is good publicity for somebody like Oprah. It just puts your name out there. Just keeps putting your name out there. And as much of her name is already out there. She had that Apple deal coming. Do some research. She had a deal with Apple and this was the step leading to that. Okay, she, it, she had nothing to lose. Um, aside from the f fact that he was acquitted, I know Oprah is like, oh, well, yeah, he, he may have been acquitted, you know, um, not found guilty, but, you know, the girls in her schools are being raped. And when you go to court, it's about, did it happen on a Tuesday or on a Thursday? And if you got the date wrong, then they throw it out. Basically, you know, you don't win the case. This is different. This is very different because these boys, these young men are talking about things, sexual molestations that happened in areas that were not built yet <laughs> at the time that they're claiming that this stuff happened. And they're talking about in the span of, you know, some years. It's not like they're saying a certain day. So it's completely different. Oprah's trying to mask this thing to make it seem like, you know, there are some nuances in the story and that's why, you know, uh, Michael Jackson got off free. No, no. And these guys here, their stories are completely off. The timeline is completely off. Somebody went and did the research like, wait, you're talking about when the, the train tracks were built and then there was this room that was built. No, those places didn't exist at that time that you're claiming the incidents or the molestation happened in that period and in those rooms and in those situations. They didn't it, exist. And let me tell you something. Anybody can go and do research, okay? It's the same with child molestation. Somebody can go and read it. This is how they do it. This is how they start to groom you. They start to buy your things. They start to do this. And they can even put a ring on your finger. And it's a ceremony and whatnot. You can go and read it and just mutter it out. It's like, yeah, that's what happened to me. You read it. Okay? You read about it. It is not the reality. For me, I I felt like I was, I don't want to say soulmate because I wasn't, sexually attra attracted to Michael Jackson at all, in any kind of way. I felt like we were, in my country, we'll say cut from the same cloth. Like we were siblings, like blood. Because there are times when I'd hear, you know, a song of his, and I'd have some dance moves in my mind, I've never seen the video, and then when I watch the video, it's the exact same moves in my mind, at the exact same time, that he would do it. It was just insane. There are things that I'll think, and then I'd watch a video and hear him say it. You know, like questions that I know people have about him and the, you know, the, the interviewer would ask and he would respond the exact same way I had it in my mind. So I really, really, really felt close to him. And I, and like he said, and I, again, I said that in my head, you know, before that I would die first than to, to abuse a child. I would die first, first. I can't, it's not even, and I see his face when he's saying that, and I feel the same way that I have that same expression. I can't even, ugh. You should never have any sexual thoughts in your mind when it comes to a child lying in the bed of an adult. For me, I want to protect children. Those two people, you know, who have come out now talking about it, um, one of them saying, well, now that they have a child, now they understand what happened to them, you're stupid. Oh yeah. Now he sees, now that he has his own child, now he realizes, okay, these things that happened to him weren't right. No, you don't have to have a child before you understand that that's wrong. And these people do not have integrity. If one day you say one thing and the next day you say something else, the truth is one. So you say you're loyal and it was happening, you know, but you were afraid. But then in the, in, in, in the Leaving Neverland, you're saying you didn't know then that it was a bad thing. Wait. So you are aware that you lied and you intentionally lied, knowingly lied, which means then if it truly was happening, you knew that it was bad. But now you're saying you didn't know that it was bad, you know, and now that you've had a child, you know that it's bad. Come on. You know, people say when you are abused, there's, there's more of a chance for you to do the same thing to somebody else. I can't even imagine how that can be true because when you're being abused, you don't like it. If you're a person of character and, in and integrity and something is happening to you that you don't like, you don't go and do it to somebody else. But if you're already an evil-minded person and something happens to you that you don't like, yes, then you want to go do the same to somebody else. 
because you want somebody else to feel your pain not even to the person who did it to you which is where you should go retaliate call it a damn day but no you want to go do somebody else who has nothing to do with you who hasn't done anything to you that's evil so you're already evil in your roots so don't be blaming it on because i was abused i'm going to abuse somebody else please i would never ever even think about somebody has slapped me so i'm going to go slap anybody else that i see in town what's wrong with you no and one of the last things was so with the Evan Chandler situation that um, there were pictures that were taken, you know, Michael Jackson had to strip naked and pictures were taken. There are two different documents I've seen. One of them said the boy's description of his penis was right, spot on, um, because it was a blemish somewhere. The other one said it was different. So let me just tell you something. And if you've watched many of Michael Jackson's interviews, he will tell you, you have to be careful when you go anywhere, even in your own house, because people put cameras in different places. You could be sitting on the toilet, and he said this specifically in one interview, sitting on the toilet and there'll be a camera under there. Like people put cameras everywhere, so yes. So again, I, his, I feel like this Chandler person's father was shady because he collected evidence, you know, collected things that in my mind, he could show to his child and say, this is what this looks like because we're gonna go to court and we're gonna make money. So you know what all these things look like. So when you make that accusation, you can provide a description. I, w I wouldn't put it past him because he's somebody who tries to swindle people. Michael Jackson said people put big hidden cameras everywhere. And so he usually has to have a security, you know, suite, you know, like check everything before he goes and stays anywhere. And yes, they do find, you know, some cameras and I can bet you they don't find some of them. And I can bet you people, you know, who put these other cameras there help, you know, they sell them. Uh, or give them to certain people or they're planted by certain people and that you know wink wink security don't find that one you know what I mean and here you go so I honestly honestly I feel like Michael Jackson was a real victim he was the victim vultures all around him people who claim to be friends business people um, seeing that he was such an icon presidents met with him presidents of different countries heads of state met with him, wanted to hear his ideas on, on healing the world truly um, and, and starting from the children. Again, like I said, children truly are our future. They are the ones that are going to be the presidents of the heads of state. So those are the ones that you connect with. Those are the ones that you want to, to feed um, uh, inspiration and, and uh, give them encouragement so that they know that whatever they put their minds to, if they put their you know efforts behind it, yeah, they have a much higher chance of success. I've looked at both sides and in my mind it's quite clear now. And it's to the benefit of the Wade, you know, and the Safe Chuck to smear his name because that's how they will win their uh, their, their court cases. That's how they're going to win. Um, so it is to their benefit to, to do that. It's just to me, you know, your character speaks volumes when you're like this with a person, you know, like buddies, like thick or thin, and then the person passes away and you flip. <laughs> but as human beings, just so you have to remember, you don't trust anyone but God. Nobody. Invest in the children around you, but make sure to protect yourself from hooligans that are going to make certain claims that are not true and drag your life down, okay? So stay blessed and I'll see you in the very next video.